Well, hello and welcome to this English lesson about signs. Now, before you think this is going to be a lesson about street signs, um it's more than that. It's definitely about all of the signs or most of the signs that you would see if you were in a public place. So, this is a great English lesson to watch before you travel to an English speaking country because I will talk a little bit about street signs like this stop sign here but I'll also talk about signs you would see in a restaurant, maybe at a park, uh maybe when you go for a walk with friends in an English speaking country, you will see signs like this. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about signs. Keep off the grass. This is one of my favorite signs and this is a sign that people who have a really nice lawn, people who have really nice grass growing in front of their house. Did you hear that? That was a okay, a bird just flew into the window. I hope it's okay. I'm not sure if you heard that sound. Um I hope it's okay. Um anyways, when you have a really nice lawn, you don't necessarily want people to walk on it. Usually grouchy old men put signs up like this in my opinion but if you live in town, if you live in a city and you have a really nice lawn, you might put up a sign that says keep off the grass which simply means don't walk on my lawn. If you could please stay on the sidewalk, I would appreciate it. And then of course, we have standard signs like the stop sign. A stop sign is fairly universal around the world. Um most people when they see this sign with its eight sides, it's an octagon, they know with a red octagon, even if it didn't have the word stop, I think many of us would recognize that this sign means if you're driving your car, stop driving your car at least for a little bit. We also use this to tell people to stop doing other things. There's a little stop sign on the door of my school and it says stop. Do you have any of the following symptoms? And then it asks you if you have any of the you know cough, cold uh, symptoms. So, a stop sign can mean stop your car. It can also mean that you should stop and do something before you enter a building. We of course have speed limit signs. In Canada, we use the metric system. When I leave my house, I'm allowed to drive 80 kilometers an hour. When I get to the town where I work, I need to slow down and drive 50 kilometers an hour. It's important that you know what the speed limit is when you're driving a car. In Canada, you're kind of allowed to go above the speed limit a little bit. You're not really allowed but I'll just say this. I usually drive about 85, maybe even 90 kilometers an hour in an 80 zone. And in a 50 zone, I often drive 50, maybe 55, never any faster because I don't want to be unsafe. I don't want to speed in town where there might be people walking or little kids playing. When you're in a restaurant or maybe when you are in a store, you might need to go to the bathroom. You might need to use the restroom. In Canada, we often say washroom as well. But this sign that you see here, is a a fairly normal sign that you will see if you are looking for a place to go to the bathroom. Um if you don't know where the bathrooms are, you can always ask uh and someone will usually point to a sign like this that says restroom or it might just have the figures on it indicating who's allowed to use which bathroom. But definitely if you're at an airport or in the mall or at a store or in a restaurant, Uh, If you need to go to the restroom or use the washroom or use the bathroom, whichever word you want to use, um that's the sign you would look for. Sometimes at school, uh the caretaker, the janitor mops the floor and the floor is a little bit wet and that can be dangerous. So, they put out this sign, caution, wet floor. So, when I'm walking down the hallway, if I see this sign, I know I shouldn't run. (laughs) <laughs> You're not supposed to run anyways. Um you might see a sign like this at a mall. Very common to see a sign like this after people clean an area up. There was a sign like this in the grocery store the other day because someone dropped something and the bottle shattered on the floor and then they came and cleaned it up and mopped it and then they left this sign there. Caution wet floor. The reason you put this sign up is because you don't want people to slip. 
You don't want people to slip and fall if the floor is a little bit wet. Then of course, we have the do not enter sign. This is similar to keep off the grass a little bit. It means that you should not enter whatever building you are in front of. So, if you're walking along and you see a sign that says do not enter, you should probably not enter. It might be dangerous if you enter. It might just be a place where people don't want you to enter but often you will see a sign like this. Maybe if you're in the mall and there is a store that's being renovated. So, the store is closed and they're changing the store, fixing up the store for it to be something else. There might be a sign that says caution, do not enter because they don't want you to come in. They don't want you to enter the store. When I walk along the road, there are what are called hydro poles in Canada. Um you might call them telephone poles. You might call them utility poles but they all have a little sign on them that says danger, high voltage and then on mine, it actually says do not climb. So, don't climb. Um when something is dangerous, we put a sign on it indicating that it's dangerous. Danger, high voltage. Um you might have a storage cabinet on a farm that has chemicals in it and it might say danger, chemical storage. So, whenever something is dangerous, when something can harm you, we often put a sign on it that says danger and then we explain why it is dangerous. So, generally anything that has a lot of electricity will have a sign that says danger, high voltage. This sign is very common in Canada. In my part of Ontario, you really can't smoke anywhere. It's rare for you to be able to find a place to smoke. So, we have a lot of no smoking signs. You'll have these in restaurants. You'll have these at the mall. You'll have these in stores. In Canada, you cannot smoke in public places. Even outside of some of our buildings, people are not allowed to smoke right by the door. So, in Canada, sometimes you can smoke away from the door of a building outside but close to the entrance and exit, there's often no smoking signs as well um because uh well, it's kind of bad for you. I know some of you may be smokers but uh it is not healthy. Just just so you know. I know you know that. We also have what's called a caution sign. So, when something is dangerous like electricity, we have a danger sign. When something could be dangerous, when you could slip and fall, when you could trip. By the way, trip is when you're walking and then you you walk into something and you trip. Um so, you might see this when you're getting onto uh the subway. There might be a little um sign on the floor that says caution, watch your step. You might have this on the bottom step of a um of a stairs where it just says caution, watch your step. And yellow is a very common color to use for caution signs. Um so, caution. So, again, the difference, if it says danger, it's a little more serious. Danger means if you go in here, you will probably be injured or something bad will happen. Caution means be aware, be careful because the situation might be a little bit dangerous. And then here's another uh road sign, uh construction ahead. This is very common in Canada in the summer. A lot of road work happens in the summer. So, when you're driving along, you'll see orange signs with an arrow that mean if you could please slow down because there are people working ahead to improve the road or fix the road or fix a bridge or install a installing a stoplight. Um whenever you see a construction ahead sign, you should slow down. You should be aware of what's happening and you should look for some kind of construction in the next few kilometers or miles if you use miles in your country. And then this is uh similar to the keep off the grass sign, no trespassing. If you own a store or a building in Canada and you have a problem with people coming on your property at night, you might put up signs like this. Private property, that means it's not public property. It's not a park. It's not 
uh, a parking lot. It's private property. You own it. So, you do not want anyone to walk on your property. So, you add no trespassing. Trespassing is when you walk across someone else's property. If you walked on my farm without my permission, you would be trespassing. Whenever you walk on someone else's property in Canada, you have to ask for permission. You don't need permission to go to the park. You don't need permission to go to the mall. You don't need permission to go to what we call public places but you can't just walk on someone's private property and if you do, they might eventually put up signs that say no trespassing. Watch your your step. I think did I have the caution watch your step? I did. This is common when you're getting on an elevator. If the elevator sometimes doesn't line up even when the doors open, there might be a sign there. I was in a really old hotel once and when the elevator stopped, it was always a little bit lower than the floor and they their fix was they put stickers that said watch your step. You might also see this when you get onto a bus or uh, onto when you get on the subway. You might see this as well. Watch your step. So, be careful because you don't want to trip and fall. Remember, tripping is when you walk into something. Slipping is when you go like this like it's slippery. Uh another street sign. Sometimes when you're driving, the road You can drive one way and if you turn around, you can drive the other way. There's a yellow line down the middle but sometimes it is a one-way street. Um sorry, I should have used the word street earlier. There's no one-way roads really. They're almost always called one-way streets and that means you can only drive in one direction. Um are there one-way roads? I'm not sure actually. I should find out. Let me check for a sec. No, let me. I'm not gonna worry about it. No littering. This is one of my pet peeves. I don't like it when people throw garbage on the ground. I don't like it when they throw trash on the ground. Often when I go to the park, um in spite of the fact that the park has lots of signs like this that say no littering and most parks in Canada have lots of garbage cans and recycle bins, people still just throw stuff on the ground. So, this is a sign that says, Don't throw your garbage on the ground. No littering. Please keep the park nice for everyone. You might see this in other places as well but it's probably most common in a place like a park. Um I haven't seen this sign for a while but some businesses sometimes they have a sign that says um no shirt, no shoes, no service and this means that if you're just wearing a pair of shorts and you don't have anything on your feet. Um you're walking around in bare feet uh and you don't have any shoes on and you don't have a shirt on, they are not going to sell you anything. Some restaurants like it that people have a shirt and shoes on when they come in. Uh shoes probably because that's just healthier and more sanitary but uh you might see this in a place. Basically, if you are just walking around and all you're wearing is pants, they're not gonna sell you anything if you go to that place. Uh, Honestly, I haven't seen this sign for a while. I wonder if they've disappeared now but this used to be pretty common. Some people love dogs and some people don't like dogs and some people don't like dogs in certain places. So, last night, I actually was at a park and the park had an area called a leash free area where dogs were allowed to run around but then it had another area where there was a sign that said no dogs allowed. So, when you see a sign that says no dogs allowed, it means it's not um permitted. I we've seen this sign a couple times now. I think it was in the uh previous one as well. The red circle with the line through it. I think everyone is aware this is the sign, the symbol that means something is not allowed. It's forbidden. So, if you see Um something like that with a cell phone in it, it means you can't use your phone. If you see it with a dog in it, it means no dogs are allowed. You may not bring your dog to this place. Have you ever been somewhere where you needed to, I don't know, renew your driver's license or maybe you've gone to the doctor's office and you don't have an appointment? There are places where it says take a number. 
and they'll have a little device where you can pull a number out. We actually have this in our grocery store if you go to buy meat from the butcher section. You need to take a number and then when they call your number or when your number shows up on a screen, it's your turn uh to be served. So, sometimes if you go somewhere that's really busy, I know we definitely have these if I go to renew my driver's license. Now, I normally just do it online now but if I went in person to the uh place to do that, I would probably have to take a number and then wait until they call my number or my number shows up on a screen and then it is my turn. We have a number of what I call at your own risk signs. When you do something at your own risk, it means you're deciding to do something dangerous and no one is going to be there to help you. So, when you go hiking, you might hike on a trail and it'll say use this trail at your own risk. That means there's there's no fence. There's nothing stopping you from falling. Um so, be very careful. There are some pools that do not have lifeguards and so, they'll have a sign. There's no lifeguard on duty. There is no person here who's going to save you. So, swim at your own risk. So, when you do something at your own risk, you are taking responsibility for the dangerous or slightly dangerous thing that you are doing. Hopefully, that made sense. Um we do have these on hiking trails. There are some pools, etc, etc. Um no parking anytime. These are very common signs and I have kind of a funny story about this. We went for a hike two weeks ago and there were a lot of people parked in the parking lot and there were no more spaces in the parking lot. So, I parked on the street and I failed to notice that there was a no parking sign and when I got back from the hike, I had a thirty dollar parking ticket because I didn't see the sign. So, if you see a sign that says no parking, two things. One, don't park there and two, if you do, you will probably get a parking ticket. Thirty dollars. I paid it right away. You should always pay things like that right away because in Canada, if you don't pay your parking ticket, eventually you can't renew your driver's license. They'll say, oh, you have an outstanding parking ticket, sir. You must pay that before you can renew your license. This is another street sign. If you ever see an H in a blue square, at least in my part of the world, it means there is a hospital ahead. It means you are either at the hospital or you're driving in the right direction to find the hospital. So, the blue square with the H in it means if you are uh, maybe you've hurt yourself and you're in a strange town. If you see these, you're you're going the right direction to find the hospital that you want to go to. So, in Canada, uh, let me get this. In Canada, there are many places that have cameras and if they have cameras to prevent theft or to prevent vandalism, vandalism is when someone damages a building or something. Um they will put up cameras so that they can record it but they might also put up signs that say, you know, parking lot under video surveillance, security notice because cameras do two things. When you put up a camera, it prevents crime. When a criminal or someone who's going to do something sees a camera, they might decide not to do it. So, it's very preventative and it also records what's happening. So, it's nice to uh, let people know because then they might not do the bad thing they were thinking of doing. So, video surveillance signs are pretty common. You might also see safety first signs. These are very common in places where something could be dangerous. So, for instance, you can see here hearing protection required in this area. Often in a factory, when you walk into a factory, there will be signs that say safety first, hard hat required or uh, ear protection required or safety goggles required or safety glasses um because they know that there is the potential that something bad could happen. It usually doesn't but if everyone wears their protective gear, um it's less likely to happen. So, um yes, definitely when you are 
usually like in a workshop or at a factory, you will see signs that say safety first. We also have just general warning signs. So, similar to danger and caution, I would say warning and caution are very similar. They're just saying uh don't whatever it says below, uh read it carefully. So, this one happens to say warning, restricted area, entry forbidden behind this point. So, what they're basically warning you about is that if you go into that area, the police might come and arrest you or someone might, a security guard might escort you off of the premises. A lot of big words there. But a warning is usually um information about an area or a thing. Um you might even have a warning sign on a piece of equipment. Warning, do not operate this piece of equipment um without wearing safety goggles. There might be a warning. So, it's basically, it's the same as caution. It's telling you to be careful in a situation. And then, of course, if you are in a building with multiple stories, so multiple floors, you might have signs that tell you what to do in case of fire. If you're staying at a hotel, it might say, in case of fire, exit from the south stairwell. In case of fire, do not use the elevator. In case of fire, um break glass. Sometimes there's a fire extinguisher behind. I don't know if they have that anymore. In case of fire, use south stairwell and exit the building calmly. Um so, in case of fire simply tells you what to do in a building if a fire was to start. So, a street sign. So, I was saying that all street signs are green in Canada. I don't actually know but these are. This is very common to see Smith Street and Cannon Street. A street sign is simply a sign that tells you the name of the street. Um sometimes it's hard to find them and sometimes I think street signs are too small. They're hard to read. When something is hard to read, it means you can't quite see the letters. Sometimes I'm driving and I can't see the street sign. So, I don't know what the name of the street is. That can be a little bit frustrating. When you drive around as well, you might see something that is for sale. Someone might have a sign in front of their house and we simply call it a for sale sign. Did you see that Jim's house has a for sale sign on the front lawn? He's selling his house. Or did you see that car? It had a for sale sign in the window. Some that car is for sale. So, when you own something, and you don't want it anymore and you want to sell it to someone else, you might put a for sale sign on it. This is a very common type of sign, the open and closed sign. So, when you go to a store, hopefully it says open in the door or window and hopefully it doesn't say closed. When it says open, obviously, you can go in and buy stuff. When it says closed, you have to wait until the next day. So, often when people have a store, not often. I think all the time. If if you have a store, you have a sign that says open or closed. So, people know when they can come and shop there. We also have signs made uh that we call neon signs. I was gonna say they're made from neon. They're not made from neon. They are made from bulbs that have neon gas in them uh and you can then form a sign that glows, a sign that is illuminated, a sign that gives off light and it's very very cool. Sometimes you'll see a neon sign in the window of a store advertising something. This would maybe be in a restaurant or club and it's simply pointing to where the bathrooms are. It's it's probably in the UK though if it says toilets. We also have what's called a digital sign. So, this is a sign where you can change what's on the sign. Often in front of um yeah, our a fast food restaurant. The fast food restaurant in my local town has a digital sign and the sign changes every few days. Sometimes it says buy two hamburgers today special buy two hamburgers for five dollars or it will say today um chicken burgers on sale. A digital sign is something that can be changed and it will have a different message on it every day. Rules. So, sometimes you'll go somewhere and there will be a sign that has rules on it. 
you might see this at a playground like this sign. It says basically, it doesn't have the actual numbers but um it tells you who's allowed to play there. You might go to a campground and there will be a sign that has rules. No fire uh af- no fire before 6 PM or um no loud music after 10 PM. There will be rules. So, whenever you go somewhere where people spend time together um you might see a sign like this that has rules on it. Hey, sometimes a store will put something out front called a sandwich board. This is a board that simply uh, displays some information. It's another type of sign. So, maybe you have a store that sells coffee and baked goods. You might put a sign out on the sidewalk every morning like this. You might put a sandwich board out that says um that you're selling a new type of coffee that day or that if you um are over the age of 65, coffee is 10 percent off today. But a sandwich board is a way to tell people what you sell. We have a sandwich board that we put at the road when we sell flowers that just says flowers with a big arrow pointing towards our farm. Um you might be driving and you might be going past a school Uh in most places when you drive past a school, it's important to drive slowly because there are a lot of little kids around and we would call it a school zone. It's not a good idea to speed in a school zone. Sometimes you get a bigger ticket if you are caught speeding in a school zone because we want school zones. We want the roads around our schools to be very very safe. We don't want people to speed because we don't want anything bad to happen. So, you will see a sign like this school which means that you are in an area where you should drive slowly and watch out for little children. So, there are a couple of different ways to find parking in a city. Um you can look for a circle, a green circle with a P in it. It might be a blue circle with a P in it. It might be a blue square with a P in it but generally, If you are in a city and you need to park your car, you want to find a parking lot and often you will see signs with the letter P in it. In my part of the world, usually green, sometimes blue Um, and in some parts of the world, again, it might be a square but you would use that to find a place where you can park. Um usually it costs money though. It's hard to find in a big Canadian city, it's hard to find a place to park um that is free. So, let's see here. You might have a sign that says hazardous materials. Now, this is another caution sign uh but you might have a sign that says um you know hazardous materials don't enter here without protective gear or protective clothing. This would be rare. This would be like at a factory or something like that. Um But uh yeah, it's just warning you that you should be careful and be aware of what danger lies ahead. You might have an informational sign. So, there were a lot of these in the last couple of years. Um there still are a lot of these. When you walk up to the front door of a store, when I go to work at my school, there is an informational sign and it says stop. Just like remember I said we use stop for a lot of things. Stop the spread of germs and then it kind of tells you what to do to prevent the spread of disease. Um we we have one too that says stop. Do you have any of the following symptoms? Uh fever, sore throat, headache and it asks you all the question. It is an informational sign to find out if you're feeling well. And then here is a really really big sign when you drive along a highway There might be a really really big sign that we call a billboard. A billboard is a sign that shows you that there's probably a restaurant ahead. That's usually what billboards are for Uh, and if you get off the highway, you can go there and buy something. So, a billboard, it's probably the biggest type of sign that I know of, a billboard. Gigantic, a gigantic sign. 